curious on how to turn a sweater into a pair of mittens? Well, in this video I will show you how. We are using my Tova mitten sewing pattern that you can get at shop.thelaststitch.com. Link will of course be in the description section, but you can of course use any sewing patterns for mittens. So we need three pattern pieces for this project. A thumb piece, a back and then a front. And by the way, you don't need a cuff pattern piece because we're actually using the knitted cuffs from the sweater, which makes this even easier. Start off by cutting the cuffs off the sleeves. Try and see if they fit because you might need to make them slightly tighter, but that's an easy fix and I'll show you how to do that later on in this tutorial. Then you place the pattern pieces on the sweater. Note that if your sweater has a prominent knitting texture pattern, such as a cable knit, I recommend you cut the pieces as a single layer to make sure that the texture ends up at the same spot on both the right and the side piece. So if you have a cable knit, make sure that it ends up in the middle of both the left and the right mitten piece. And here are all the pieces cut and ready to be sewn. So what you start off is by placing the thumb piece on the back palm piece, right side facing, the wrong side up. And what we're going to do now is to so along the curved line to attach the thumb to that palm piece. And we're going to do this on a regular sewing machine. So you set your machine for a narrow zigzag stitch, which means you reduce the width of the stitch to make it look a bit straighter, but still it has some stretch. You can always do a sample and try to see what works for you. And then you stitch along the curve. And one thing to know here is that on very loose knits, I recommend stitching two rows actually, because that will keep any loops from slipping through, which definitely can be an issue when you're sewing refashioned knitting garments like a loosely knitted sweater. This was the first step, and right now it might look, well, pretty much nothing like a pair of mittens, but soon the magic will happen. So what you do is that you fold the thumb piece in the middle so that the edges meet. And this step is in preparation for closing the thumb. As I said, it might look a bit like a puzzle, but when you're doing it with your own hands, it will all make perfect sense. And then you stitch together the thumb, again using a narrow zigzag stitch. Start at the outer corner, then pivot where the thumb begins and sew all the way around, making sure that the lower la layer doesn't slip so that you catch both layers with your sewing. Again. I do recommend that reinforcing this area with a second row, especially if you're using, as I said, loosely knitted sweater. You might also need to trim the corner to round out that shape of the thumb. And then turn the thumb out. Now it's starting to look more like a mitten, right? So the next step is to add the upper palm piece. What you do is that you place the upper palm piece on top of the back palm, that's a thumb piece, with the right sides facing and make sure here that the thumb is folded away towards the middle because you need to make sure that you won't catch it when you're sewing together the, the mitten later on. Stitch along the outer edges of the entire mitten, again using a narrow zigzag stitch or you can even use a stretch seam. And as I said, when you pass the thumb piece, make sure it's folded away so it isn't caught in the seam. Also, again, Make sure that you catch both layers when sewing because snits can really be quite slippery to sew. So you have to be super careful when you're doing this using a um, sweater. Now we're almost done sewing the mittens. As I told you, it will all make sense once we get going. And notice the corner underneath the thumb. That is the corner pivot that we did when we attached the thumb. So that is where the magic happens and creates this like 3D shape of this flat pattern. So now we're going to prepare the cuffs. Try them on the wrist and see if they fit. If they're too big, pin them to mark how much to trim. And note here that it also depends on how wide the glove part of the mittens is because the cuffs, they should be smaller than the opening of the mittens, but not too much because that would create too much gather. So you need to find that happy medium. And once you figure out the perfect width, you remove that extra width from the cuffs. To close the circle, you stitch the trim cuffs together using a narrow zigzag stitch. And now we reach the final step, which is to attach the cuffs to the mittens. So what you do is that you pull the cuffs over the opening with the cut edge aligned with the edge of the globe, if that makes sense. 
Remember that right side should be facing with the wrong side up. If you have a serger, I do recommend using it for this step because you can use the differential feed to pull together the fabric and preventing it from stretching out, which can be an issue when you're sewing more loosely knitted fabrics. But of course, you can also use, again, a narrow zigzag stitch on your sewing machine or perhaps even better, a stretch seam on your sewing machine. Stretch out the cuffs when they are sewn because they should be smaller than the opening of the mittens, but do not stretch the actual glove part of the mittens, just the cuff. Say hi to the finished mittens. As you can see, this was a quick and easy product. It doesn't involve a heap of steps and it's also a great way to give new life to an old sweater. And by the way, if you like this idea, I also done a tutorial on how to turn a sweater into a knit hat, which is on my website, thelaststitch.com. Again, link will be in the description section. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial useful and of course, Check out my other videos to learn more about sewing.